What is going on guys? Welcome to the second part of the live updating charts within Matplotlib. I know you're already just itching to get these charts out, so sorry I made you guys look at documentation. Pretty much nobody likes it, but you can find all kinds of gems in there. So, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need to import a few things from Matplotlib. First, we're going to want to import PyPlot. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. That just makes it so we can, uh, instead of having to write all of this out, we just put plt. Nice stuff. Import matplotlib.animation as, uh, I guess we'll just do animation. We're only going to mention this one time, so it's kind of useful to have the whole thing written out. Um, and then finally, we're going to import, well, we don't... We don't totally need it, but we're going to go ahead and import time anyway, just in case I want a sleeper. So, um, next thing we want to do is we define our figure, just like uh, always. So, fig equals plt.figure, empty parameters there. Um, you could specify figure size and some other stuff in there, but for now we'll just leave it blank. Then we're going to specify ax1 for axes 1. For now it's going to be our only axes, but if you're uh, coming from... Any of my other ones, you know, a lot of times you might have a lot more than just one axis. Uh, so anyway, fig.add underscore subplot, and in here it's going to be a one by one, and obviously there's only one option, so it will be chart number one in that little uh, box there. Now what we need to do is define our function here. So what I'm going to do is define animate. And within animate, we're going to have um, one parameter, which is going to be i. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we need to have somewhere that we're getting data, right? So what I did is made a sample file called sample text. And let me just bring that up in Notepad. And here is our sample file. So the, it's just a bunch of X and Ys, right? So 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, 9, and so on. So if you don't already have one, why don't you go ahead and make one with a uh, right-click new, make some, some sort of text document, and just put some sample variables right on in there. Um, and then just go ahead and leave it open, because then we're going we're gonna to reference this, and then we're going to edit it live. Um, and you don't need to make it with a Notepad++, obviously, you can make it in any, any text editor, really. So once you've made up your uh, sample file of X's and Y's, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is finish up what we were doing <laughs> and come over here and we're going to say pull data equals open. And within here we're going to do, uh, I called mine sample text dot text, so sample text dot text with the intention to read it and let's go ahead and read it next we're going to say data array equals pull data dot split by new line and then let's specify x r for x array and then y r for y array subsequently now what we're going to do is for each line in data array I would just I'm going to throw in this little if statement here you don't have to put this, uh, but a lot of times text documents are going to come with like an empty line. So I just throw like a quick stupid if statement in here, like if len each line greater than one, right? So we need at least two variables here. Uh, then we'll do the following. That way, if you do have an empty line, it won't won't kill you. So a lot of uh, like a lot of sources will have empty lines just because of like the way you append a file. Usually end with a new line, and so like that's why you always end up with these extra lines. But anyway, if that is the case, x y so x comma y so this is just unpacking the uh, thing here. So it equals each line dot split by a comma. So this makes two variables. The first one will be x, the second one will be y. So then we're going to say x r for x array dot append, and then we need to convert it to an integer because right now it's a string. And then we'll do the same thing with y y r and int x and that's it now we come over here and uh, what we want to do is ax1 dot plot xr yr nothing else we can make pretty colors and all this stuff but we're not going to do that for now so that's our function and there's going to be one more thing added to that function but first I won't do it I just want to uh, finish this for you guys so then we're going to say 
any for animate equals animation dot funk animation. Pay attention to the uh, capitalizations here. Uh, and then here we put fig animate. So this is the figure, right? It's corresponding to this figure up here. So that's the figure that we're putting in there. The function we want to pass through is this animate function. And then interval equals, and we're going to make this 1,000. So the interval is how often do we want to refresh this? And this is in milliseconds. So this will equal one second. So every second, this will refresh. And then what we're going to do is plot.show. So we'll save that. And as long as we haven't had any errors, uh, this will generate a graph, and it will change colors for us. Uh, because of what we've done. So here's our graph, and as you can see, it is changing colors on us. Wow, it just looks so beautiful. Now, the reason it's changing colors is it's actually redrawing a line over a line every single time, and what this is going to eventually do is just brutalize uh, your memory. So the next thing that you want to do is, uh, just so you could see that it was really live updating, I decided to do that. But what you want to throw in here is ax1.clear, empty parameters, and that will clear the plot. So let's bring that up one more time. And now you see that it looks a little bit better now. And if I was to, like, let's say we throw in um, this. Um, oh, I see what I did wrong. <laughs> it's a weird straight line. Anyway, y array dot append. You need to append y. <laughs> Let me close this out. Let's do that one more time here. Save that. Run it. Okay, that's more of what it ought to have looked like. And we are already running the clear. So uh, your line probably looked like that because you're probably not as silly as I am. But, uh, so now what we can do is we can bring the text editor over here, and since you don't know that it's really live, we can do 10, 7 in our text editor, hit save, and now you can see that the line updated. So then we can do 11, 500, and then now you can see it changed again. So anyway, uh, those are just the basics and a real quick example of a live updating chart. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for the support subscriptions, and until next time.